Hello again guys, this is called Real Talk because we are just talking about things now that happened to me at work or that I encounter as a DB developer, okay? So this is called, this is about Data Vault. So what is actually Data Vault? I don't want to deep dive because it shall be a short, clear video. Go in the descriptions below or have a look at this uh, simple model here. You have basically um, three page, uh, three table types. You have hub tables, link tables, satellite tables, okay? In the hubs, you store your keys. That means your business keys, your primary keys, all what you consider as a unique identifier to your data set. Then you have links that basically just link two hubs together. In a link is just, are just two hubs, keys contained okay and in satellites you have the actual data you can have more satellites for one hub since you may want to logically split your data into different container types this is all that happens here and the satellites directly link to the hubs okay this is the basic very basic model for this so there are a few additions to this which makes it a little bit a pain for me to, de to deal with okay so the first thing is they use hashes for everything so the key is hashed if your key is consists of multiple columns because it's a business key it will be hashed everything will be hashed there is one big upside for this you can actually load everything in parallel you don't have to do uh, dimensions loading first fact loading later for uh, to get the, the the new id that you inserted that is dependent on your db system you just have the hash you know that if there is a hub for my satellite it will have this hash so i put the hash here i don't care if it's really there now or, or it will come later really deriving facts are no thing thing with this it is a big okay it's a it's upside okay to have the bit for the parallel loading it's good second thing is you want to load parallel and as fast as possible because this is the main thing of data world to have a layer right after staging in the data warehouse where you want to store everything really fast and don't care about anything okay and therefore you of course have heap tables for all of those table types of course i i talked about heap tables already and you see a description here uh, and in the, in the video um, they have also big downsides so yeah i feel like sometimes the creator of data awards didn't really uh, look into sql server which uh, how it uses heaps actually and what are the downsides of heaps and the upsides of heaps but there's one thing that bugs me even more than just using heaps because this is actually not not that big of a deal if you if you uh, don't update or delete your stuff mm. but the thing is the keys are hashes okay so there's one big problem for this they use heaps okay they have no clustered index they use uh, non-clustered primary key constraints on the hashes you know hashes if you use for instance md5 or sha1 that are cryptographic hashes with the avalanche effect that is different slightly input uh, slightly different input leads to slight uh, to not slightly different output but big difference in output this is the avalanche effect and the thing is the hashes look pretty much random so you you can imagine a random uh, a random function that basically has uh, this as keys you can also use, uh, think of the guid the, the guid the uh, that you can create with new id command in secret server it's basically the same thing it's also more or less random and to put a clustered index and it can be a technique to uh, with a fill factor that is um, not 100 percent can be a technique to uh, load quick into a clustered index to not bother with the with this um, typically rightmost page ledge io problem which we what we have okay it, yeah this is a possibility but the thing is i don't know the problem is if you put um, all hash keys and you join them and this is, you join them and you have statistics over statistics over random numbers you know in, in a SQL Server you have a histogram with 200 unique steps and if you start doing um, if you have more than 200 unique values you know it starts doing some uh, buckets for this so from to two bucket lists and if you have you if you have random numbers you will have basically random uh, even distributed buckets with same size and same statistics of it it will help the optimizer not at all to estimate joins out of this to estimate scans out of this it will be very bad and it is very bad then there's another problem the, the optimizer is <laughs> has a big deal with it and that's uh, 
the, uh, the, the number of joints in general. As you can imagine here for one object, let's assume I have one table for a sales table. Then we have here the hub. We have here a link to all the other tables that we might have that are interested in sales. And then we have the satellites that are maybe distributed in also three things. So we have already uh, four or five tables for just one table. And this can be tremendously bad if you have more links to more tables and stuff like this. So believe me, you will have much more tables than in a third normal form or a star schema. And the problem is to join all this shit together when you want to have load your data mods or your cubes or your reporting with it or another database with it, whatever. It will be a huge pain because when you come and hit the 30 year join mark, you will have at some point query plans very bad. And because of two things. First thing, estimation is bad at, in general because you have those hash keys. You have very bad statistics because the, the, the 200 histogram buckets are all basically basically the same, there's no distinction, there's no real chunk or whatever to a uh, new peak so that the SQL server knows anything out of those histograms, this is the first thing. So the regular join estimation, rows, uh, cost estimation, uh, not cost estimation, but row estimation in an estimated query plan will be already very bad. And then on top of this, we have those, this much joins and at some point your query plan looks always like output one row because it's a backup, the fallback solution. The optimizer can't do shit anymore. It's the, like if you have 30 hash joins one after another, after the 30th hash join, it says, okay, basically I estimate on a 30 times estimated value. There's no way this estimation has anything to do with the, with the reality. So this will be just output one. And then the optimizer comes up with, okay, we have now one row and we need to join it with another one row. Okay, why not do a nested loop join? Because of course we have only one row and it's very cheap, no memory, no overhead just a very cheap join or sometimes even it's just okay but it's also very simple to sort one row and then to do a merge join problem is the actual rows most likely on those paths are 8 million or something like this and then you have suddenly a plan where you have 8 million sort and uh, the memory <laughs> the sort node really uh, uh, got from the optimizer is f too few so you have spilling a level whatever uh, uh, you can't imagine so you use tempdb and disk so much that the query will never return this is a common problem and now what really bugs me is when you approach data world guys with this problem you say okay hashes are not the best keys because they are basically random for joints it's not the best thing you can do but okay but now you have also 30 plus joints what do we do with this how can we optimize this and then they say to your face i was at the conference and they say to you okay you have to persist data so what does this mean persist data you save data the same data just in another way why not saving it in another way in the first place like a fact table <laughs> okay then they say yeah you can't fast insert them hmm can you can't you i don't know are there not other techniques what did we do without data wall all the time mm. so let, let me put it like this the persisting stuff first it is basically crap if you have an approach or you have a model that is not capable of handling all your needs and then your solution is okay you have to persist the data again in another way then in clustered in next table suddenly and then in, and then and then in, in some other data mo uh, models or okay it's then called business world but in, what it is is basically a 101 911 emergency persistence of data so that any consumer that is maybe a data mart or a report or a cube can actually do anything on this data without joining um, the shit out of the server or and i think it's a very bad model you remember you have this guy that says here yeah, this is the normal form but to actually use the data you need <laughs> Two other models where you save the same data in another way you waste double your, uh, your 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 storage completely just to load fast and then to store in another way the same data again that's redundancy and redundancy in databases is very bad that's the that's the reason why we have normal forms third normal form in the first place that's the reason why we don't want to store so much duplicate data okay besides keys maybe but here we store then actually the actual data in another way. That's very bad in my opinion. The other thing, 
that they say, okay, but it's a fast insert. There's no other way in fast inserting. I disagree completely, okay? So we have always the possibility to drop your clustered index or to drop your indexes besides the cluster index and to load your data. You have the possibility to reduce fill factor and use a random ha a clustered hash uh, approach. May happen. Okay, and for, and for all of this, you have the possibility to partition your freaking fact table and to use partition switching. And there you have the same benefits. You load all your data in a heap table, okay? You lay your, uh, you put your um, constraints and your indexes on this small, small chunk that you want to insert on that heap table. And then you see, search for the right partition, merge it into the table, and then you switch everything in. It's so smooth, partition switching, partition switched low fact table loading. It's very fast. I used it for terabyte. Uh, for a fact table that is 13 terabyte big already uh, it was back then uh, when I worked for the company and it worked basically very good we could basically reload the whole table in less than one day we could reload a 13 terabyte uh, cluster index table with several indexes on it in not less uh, in, in not more than one day it is very fast for these amounts of uh, data so I don't know why we actually need something like data vault which obviously is model driven, completely driven by modelers that have no fucking clue how a SQL Server works on a technical side because then no, no sane. I, I never saw an MVP from Microsoft or some other uh, good certified or guy with tech knowledge. I never read a blog from them that data world is actually good. No, but I read blogs from them that that's actually not so good and the whole technical stuff you have to do. So. Please post in the comments if you've ever worked with Data Vault. I'm very interested in your opinions, but the fact is that you have big problems with the joints, you have big problems uh, with not uh, duplicating data, with not um, redundant savings of data, which is a bad design in my opinion. So that's it. Um, leave the comments there. Maybe you have uh, opinions about this that completely are uh, the opposite of mine. Please, I want to know everything. And in the next um, real talk, we will talk about another thing that bugs me or that maybe is great and I want to talk to you about. Uh, so I'm very looking forward for this series. So goodbye and don't take it too serious, guys.